Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to look at the single coolest game engine that I had never heard of before in my life, and that is the G3D Innovation Engine, and as I said, it's a very, very cool project. It's a very unique project in a way, as it's, the purpose behind this engine is a bit different than what you think. Um, it is built as, you know, AAA game production ready, but it's a learning engine. So it's for doing um, experiments, graphics tests, or also it's a teaching engine for um, used as part of a class syllabus. It's actually awesome. And if you're looking at learning how to create a game engine or learning how 3D graphics work, or you need a low level graphics playground, uh, you know, to implement your own suggestions, G3D might be the perfect place for you to start. And let's just start it all off with some eye candy. Everyone likes eye candy. And here is an example scene running inside the G3D engine. Uh, slowing to a crawl for some reason, but uh, you can see here, it, it is a real-time rendering of a scene with a whole lot of lighting effects going on. And this is the G3D engine in action. This is one of the default samples that come with it. I'll get back to the samples in a second, but this loads and demonstrates one of the example scenes. Um, now let me show you some of the, uh, the graphic trickery going on here. So I'm gonna switch out this camera to the debug camera, like so. And now we have access to the debug camera. So we're, we're running an application, but you're able to embed a number of controls and features into it, such as this uh, debugger toolbar, a uh, developer toolbar, which has access to things like a profile, even a level editor of sorts that we'll see in a second. Uh, but you can see here, uh, we've got a lot of graphic settings we can work with. So we're dealing with, um, we're, got a camera going on, we can fake, we can do uh, some default settings like a celluloid camera, contrast, saturated, burned out, negative. Let's go back to identity. All right, so you see here we can also modify the gamma. So you get an idea of the graphics fidelity going on in this engine. Now I wanna put the gamma back to about normal. Uh, you can change bloom from your lighting, bloom radius, uh, vignette, like so. And down we go. We got anti-aliasing, so you can play around with full X, uh, temporal TAA, and you see the immediate results. So you got an idea of what the rendering quality-wise this is doing. We've also got settings for uh, depth of field. It's not gonna do much in this particular example. Um, motion blur, again, it's not gonna do a whole lot in this particular example. And I should also have ambient occlusion options. So if I come down here, what we can do is go into the scene editor and basically I just unlocked this scene. So now it's editable and actually I can make changes to it and save it back out to one of their native scene file formats, which is really cool because on top of that, this engine actually comes with gigabytes upon gigabytes of assets for you to get started with. So for example, I can go here, Here's the project as I've downloaded it. Like I said, it's about a 10 gigabyte install uh, over SVN, uh, but you can also get a stripped down version, which is more about three or 400 megabytes. Um, but this is the full blown version. You'll notice I've got this data directory here and inside of the data directory, we have a bunch of content to work with. So what I'm gonna do here is open up the Viper, which might sound familiar. I'm just gonna grab the object file. And so it's got all of its various textures, etc. But I'm just grabbing the object file for this particular case going back to our sample and dropping it in the scene. And you see, we're actually just instancing a copy of that file here. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, just put it wherever it comes at whatever size it's at. And there you see, we now have a Viper in our scene. Uh, I can select it and we can do positioning like so. And ta-da, so you can use these simple tools to basically create a 3D world out of any of your applications. So if you derive or create your own application, you can embed this scene editing functionality in like a line of code. Um, so it is a really impressive engine. For some reason this is lagging out a bit, so I'll get rid of it. And we're heading on back over here. Here's the code that you're looking at. So you've got a number of different samples and they're basically showing off different functionality. Uh, ray tracing, procedural geometry generation, um, real-time ray tracing, entity in the scene, which is a dynamically generated 3D scene, almost a full-blown game. Speaking of almost a full-blown game, we can actually go over here to Simple Game. I will set that as my startup project. And, ta-da! You have an actual full-blown implemented FPS game with source code running in this engine. So, it's pretty staggeringly awesome. Uh, 
Implementing your own games as well is pretty simple. In the Windows world, you basically just, you know, let me just exit that down. In the Windows world, you copy a created project, uh, rename a couple things, etc. The install process for the entire engine is fairly straightforward as well. There's a few dependencies and you wanna make sure that you hit them. So it says you need Python 3.0 six-ish, uh, make sure you have that and make sure that Python 2.x isn't in your path. That's the only problem I ran into with installing it. We got to set up a couple environment variables, uh, run the SVN command, and really that's almost about it. You run a command line build and it builds everything for you. It's all pretty well documented step by step so you can get through it. So why should we take this engine so seriously? Well, first off, part of that might be the person who made it. Uh, this is uh, Morgan at Casual Effects. Now he's he's had collaborate, collaborators on this engine, so it's not exclusively him. But I believe he is the primary artist, uh, primary uh, programmer on the team, uh, and it's definitely his project. But if you look at his um, CV of sorts here, you'll see that he is uh, a VR scientist at NVIDIA, so he knows his math. Um, and on top of that, he's a college professor, and that's going to come in relevant in a few seconds. Um, he's worked at Unity, uh, worked on Graphics Codex, we'll get back to that in a second. He's also worked on games such as Titan Quest. So this guy has pedigree. He's been a game developer for a number of years, and I actually found out about this engine because I follow him on Twitter. He's done a really interesting series of tweets on uh, real-time ray tracing as of late that I've been following. And then he just happened to mention this game engine, which I've downloaded, and now I am presenting to you. Um, so this is the guy behind the engine, and this is the actual engine itself. As always, I will throw this link down below. I guess I should have covered this right up front. The engine is completely free, and it is completely open source. Now, the licensing, uh, it was very liberal. I believe it was MIT license. Let's see if it's actually written here. Yeah, it's down at the bottom here. The license is primarily... BSD, which is a very liberal license. You're good to go, and it's explained there. Now, on top of that, there are some caveats because this library depends on a number of other libraries, such as the FMOD Music Library. So there are a few gotchas with redistributing the source code, but the BSD license is very liberal in what you're allowed to do. Um, so this is basically as free of a game engine as you can get, fully open source, and again, it comes with gigabytes upon gigabytes of assets to get you started, which is awesome. And then here we can go through the, the general feature list of the engine. You see we've got forward and referred um, and deferred shading, uh, parallel ray tracing, cloud and remote re um, rendering. So you can actually run it to a, a mobile device if you wish. Um, there's in-engine prototyping tools. I showed you a little bit of that, such as the ability to drag and drop a model right onto your scene and then position it within the scene, uh, change up the cameras on the fly. There's video recording and screenshotting built, built right into it. Um, it has got uh, all your 3D primitive support. There's virtual reality support in there for Vive, uh, Rift, and DK2 output. Uh, audio and video API, state-of-the-art effects, including ambient occlusion, motion blur depth of fields, um, screen space radiosity, bloom, tone mapping, vignetting, and order independent transparency, support for pretty much every format you ever wanted to see. Although for some reason, MD2 and MD3 seem to be broken for me. Six gigabytes of assets that are actually included with it for you to get up and play with. And on top of that, it works on Windows 10, 8, 7, Vista XP, OS X, and Linux. Um, yeah, it, it's impressive. And like I said, the install is pretty turnkey. Now they have built a prototype installer. Didn't work for me. Uh, hopefully it works a little bit better for you, make the process even easier. But from now to install it, you're actually going to have to go through their install guide. Now it's pretty thorough on a language by language basis. Uh, and the cool thing is if you are on Mac or Linux, there's even like a new project generator for you. So if you want to start your own project, uh, they've got something built in. Oh, I got this screen up twice. So we'll ignore that going on. But again, I will link down this page so you can learn a bit more of the engine, um, grab the source code, etc. Over here, you'll see you know, a bit more of an explanation of what's going on. Now, one of the really cool things that they've done there is they've tried to make things as modular as possible. So if you just need geometric primitive for your own engine, you can actually go in there and grab that chunk of code. Everything, like the number of dependencies between the code is minimalized so that you can slot in, slot out, and take from and learn from this actual engine. And that actually comes up relevant to what we were talking about earlier. When I was talking about this guy, and he says right here that first off, he's a college pro professor, ugh, I can't speak today, and second, the Graphics Codex. While well, the Graphics Codex is a companion book, it's 10 bucks, I think, um, but basically iOS app and web-based edition, and it walks through 
the logic behind this game engine. So the G3D game engine kind of corresponds with um, this book. So you've got a sample chapter up here somewhere. So sample course, for example, you will see um, explanation and in-depth um, details on each one of these examples that we're seeing over here. Uh, so for example, if you were, it was a chapter on Oh, what's the one he just showed? That was actually a really cool example, so I want to show it. Just a second. Okay, say, for example, you're studying on ray tracing. There is a full um, demo in here on implementing real-time ray tracing. So, of course, come in here. You've got your uh, full source code on that example, and you'll see it's actually pretty streamlined. It's not as uh, convoluted or huge as you would thought. That's kind of the power of the framework. It makes these things quite um, impressive and expressive. You don't need to do a whole lot of code to accomplish something that's really impressive. And here, for example, let's show you what real impressive is. So let me just set that as my startup project and we'll do a release build. And this is the example for real-time ray tracing. And, and this is kind of the future, actually. So this is what has been announced recently with uh, DX. Oh, what do they call it? DXR, the DirectX 12 real-time ray tracing. That was kind of the star of the show from this year's GDC. Well, here you can see an example. This is actually not rendering in the traditional manner. Uh, this is using um, ray tracing to actually do this. So you see, I can actually cast out a high-quality ray, and there is the end result in our scene. It's it's just awesome, like truly, absolutely awesome. Some of these examples. Like so, so you can see he's got, um, on the one hand, you know, you've got the actual hands-on course, but you've actually got this course that goes along with it. So we can go back over to the web page for a second. You'll see here, this is the syllabus of things that are actually covered. So it's designed to support, um, support a course either as the sole standalone text or as lecture notes. Um, so this is to go along with his basic teaching levels. And But keep in mind, this is not low-level stuff. This is a 300-level undergrad course, so you're, you're going to have to know your math to get anything out of it. But there's not a lot of places where you're going to get this level of detail over these kinds of subjects. And that's kind of what he's done. He's built a course that goes along with this game engine, or I guess you could say he's built a game engine that goes along with this course. kind of depends on how you want to look at it. But if you're looking to learn uh, more advanced graphics programming, I can't think of um, too many better sources, to be honest. And, and ironically, the few that I can think of, especially this one, this is the Bible of sorts uh, for graphics programming, but these are his other referrals. Um, but this this book is a classroom level course with a full-blown game engine that goes along with it that teaches you these things. Pretty impressive. Um, and I'm not sure why I linked this. Oh yeah, so this is a direct list of the uh, projects that correspond back to the graphics codex and what you will be working on. So you've got um, cubes, meshes, uh, geometry design, including uh, voxels, etc., arrays, recasting paths, uh, renderer design, and uh, real-time GPU usage, and then he's working on these ones as well. And once again, they do build entirely on this underlying game engine, which you have full and complete source code for. Uh, let's get out of the samples. So here is, for example, the base of the library. It's, uh, it's all there. And, and as I mentioned earlier on, he's designed all of this to be, um, as portable as possible. And then creating your own project is again, a pretty straightforward process. Um, you just have to set a couple environment variables to port to where all the data and the binaries are. Uh, you take a project, you rename it, you put it wherever you want, and then you are off to the races. So for example, here is mine. So I created this one off of his document. It took me all of about one minute to create my own standalone project. And then this is what you're dealing with when you spawn off your own as a starting point. Um, the code is very well documented. So let's go into the app. So here is the source code. Let me just zoom that in. And you'll see pretty straightforward code. If you know C++, it's very clean and easy to understand. You can see there's a lot of documentation or comments in line that show you what you're working with. So, you know, a lot of things that you would normally play around with, such as, you know, changing up the resolution. They've got the various different options available to you. Um, you create, set up your window, create an app and run it. App is a pretty straightforward constructor. You see here, you've got your initialization code. You can do things. So if you want to add functionality, as I was showing you, there was those toolbars and features that you can put in. You can add them in as simple as 
you know, uncommenting or commenting a line of code. Um, this will load the default scene. This is that, um, uh, like the interior of the castle scene you saw right up front. You would just change this out to be the name of your own scene that was uh, within. Again, you can create a scene using the built-in tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll run this. So here's the GUI being made. Once again, really well documented. It shows you how you could go ahead and create your own particular version. The code is very clean, very straightforward, very well documented. And for a full blown example, you know, 90% 90, 90 of this example is actually comments. And this gets you this. So there it is, it's loading that default scene, like so. Uh, but what you could do, first thing I do is turn that thing off at the top, is I could come in here and I can um, unlock the scene like I showed you earlier, right there. We could switch the scene out to my own interior scene. Uh, so we've got a simple car in it. And then we can just start bringing assets in. So once again, uh, so for here in the G3D folder, uh, you basically bring in whatever you want. Now the cool thing is on top of that, all of those file formats are literally just drag and drop. So if you have a texture to bring in, you literally just drop it in. Now I'm gonna use the Viper again because this is one that I unzipped and have it ready to go. But it's a matter of just drop it on the scene as we saw. So I'm authoring or, or I'm changing up my particular scene. My Viper is at the middle of the scene. So there's my Viper. And you can compose your scene in line that way using their tools. So, and then when you like your scene, just go ahead and save it out. And then next time you load it up, it should look exactly like this. Now, let's actually test that. I didn't do that before. So let me go back to my scene. There you see. So creating and, and working with your own projects is really simple. Getting started with your own scenes is really simple. And then it's a matter of just kind of encouraging playing around. Um, that's where the source code, again, being so nicely documented, kind of shows you where you can just start adding things in. So if you want to start adding event handlers or... Um, callbacks, handling different callbacks, uh, different points of the lifestyle. You can, it's set up, it's intuitive, it's logical. And then the one final thing I'm going to discuss is the documentation. And of course, there's documentation, which is impressive. So we've got uh, the sample programs that are built in, a bit of an explanation of what they all do. So there's even a voxel world uh, out there that you can play around with. There's the starter, which we've kind of looked at extensively here, real-time ray tracing examples, etc. So you've got ample source code to start with and learn from. And then on top of that, we have a really solid um, reference for all the various different classes that exist. Uh, pretty typical documentation, but again, it is all well commented and the comments actually make sense. No, they're not just written there to be there. Uh, there's documentation of the various different developer tools that are available. Uh, so what we were using quite heavily there was the scene editor window. Uh, but there's a profiler built in, the debug window, etc. that are um, a lot of the development tools basically are embedded within your application, as you saw there. Um, we have a library overview to get you started, make sense of it, and an API overview to make sense of how things fit together. So it is a very, very well documented uh, game engine. I, again, I am staggered that I've never heard of this one before because it is, uh, it's awesome. It, it's potentially one of the uh, best learning engines, which is also still ultra capable that I have ever seen. And it's again, loaded with examples. There's a $10 manual that goes along with it that can you know teach you math at the advanced level. And that's just where there's a huge hole in the market. So again, I, I'm shocked I have never heard of this guy. So I figured I would share it with all of you. Uh, so that's the G3D innovation engine. I'm gonna continue to play around with it. It is it's very cool. And, it's, you know, if you just need to do um, an experiment or, you know, you want to see if uh, a concept works or you want to throw together a prototype or you just want to learn stuff, this may be the perfect engine for you. As far as a full-blown engine goes, the only things I'm really seeing missing compared to others is um, 
you know, advanced world editing tools. Of course, you don't come close to the uh, Unreal Engine, Unity, or Godot world editors in this particular engine. And I don't think there's physics. Uh, so you would have to slot in something like bullet physics if you wanted to have a full-blown engine. But you've got, uh, you know, a scene graph, your rendering, um, you've got your uh, audio APIs in there, you've got input APIs in there, you've got cross-platform window management. So really, all you're missing from being a full-blown, complete game engine is physics. Uh, which is, again, readily available in open source projects such as Bullet or ODE. So uh, not a deal breaker by any means. So if you're looking at learning advanced graphics programming, you want to look at some really sh um, you know, sharp C++ code that is well documented, um, this definitely is a place to go. So that is the um, G3D game engine. I hope that was as interesting to you as it was to me. And that's where I'll leave it. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below as always, and I will talk to you later. Goodbye.